Morning, everybody. Mike Tedeschi, Wealth Management Advisor with Perspective Wealth Planning. In this week's market breakdown video, we're going to take a look at the major four U.S. indexes. We're also going to take a look at the Nasdaq Banking Index, the Oil Index. We'll take a look at the Dow Jones Transports, and we'll also once again check in with gold. We've also got some really interesting data points in terms of option flow, as well as the uh, high weighting of only five names in the uh, S&P and the Nasdaq, and what that could mean for us moving forward. So uh, stay tuned. Let's jump right into it here. First and foremost, let's take a look at the S&P 500. We've talked about this a lot. This resistance zone here over the last couple of weeks has been very, very important. Uh, we laid out that 2950 zone as a really important level for the bulls to get back over. We rallied up into it and we failed. And subsequently, we had three ugly sessions where we turned back lower. And for a moment there, it looked like the bears might actually continue to push us lower. However, the market once again held this major 2800 level. And then we subsequently bounced back up. And where we failed the beginning of this week is once again that 2950 zone, and we have the sharp two day move lower. In fact, I'm filming this pre market on Thursday, the 14th, and the SP 500 looks like it's going to open up lower once again here today. So we may actually break that 2800 level, which would for the first time uh, in, in a month or so give uh, some real credence to the uh, bear perspective here. And we'll be looking at that 2720 and then underneath of that, that 2600 level. But what I will say is if we go back and we look at the 14th of last month, the S&P 500 opened at that 2800 level. So here we are a month later, and we're basically at that same price. So still, unless we break underneath of this, we really have accomplished nothing here in a month and we continue to trade in that sideways range. Now, we take a look at the Dow Jones, we see a little bit of a different story. It's rally failed at that important 24700 level, but on this bounce here, it didn't make it back to that level, right? It put in a lower high, okay? And it has actually undercut the low from uh, the original pullback as well. So in the Dow, we have lower highs and we have lower lows here in the short term, but we're still trading over that 23,000 level. That's the major level for the bears to get below. On the Russell, we have the same setup where we had that push back into that major resistance zone of 1350. For a moment there, it looked like we were going to get some leadership out of the mid and small caps, but it failed right at that level and that had a real sharp sell off. The bounce once again, didn't get back up to these highs, it made a lower high and actually now has made a lower low as well. So that is not what we want to see uh, from the bulls perspective. Now, the index that the bulls have done the best with this year, of course, has been the NASDAQ. It's still green year to date. Uh, it did break over that 9,000 level and continue to push and actually got really close to, to going and actually making a new all-time high here. It only needed a couple more sessions of up, and it actually could have done it. But if you look at where it failed, it failed right at this gap. So the gap down on the uh, 20, from between the 21st and the 24th of February is at that 9,450 level. That is the key that bears have to get up. Or I'm sorry, the bulls have to get up above. If not, right, um, you know, we're, we're not going to go look at those all-time highs. Um, however, again, this has been the strongest index, and I'm actually going to jump in uh, a little bit later in this video and talk about how the five largest companies in here have made uh, a lion's share of the gains and talk about what that could mean for us moving forward. What I want to take a look at next, though, is I want to take a look at the transports, right? We talk about goods moving through the economy. The all of the important um, indicator there for us failed right at the lows from 2018. That was not a good spot to fail at. Subsequently, it's pushed back lower and once again, much lower high. Um, than we saw on the uh, on the SP, on the on the Dow, on the Russell. And uh, that support zone 7770 or something like that. Any more downside, and you do open 7200 back up. A worst index here is definitely the financials with the banking index. It's almost pushing back into the lows from March. Really horrible action here this week. Never really had a bounce to come back up to try to test those levels. Stayed well below the 2018 lows. Hasn't even been able to get back up above the gap from the sixth week, week, week. And it's very hard without the transports, without the financials, uh, at least performing partially decently uh, for us to continue to rock and roll and make new highs. So the signs underneath the surface have continued to leave me concerned, and they still do, especially when we jump in and take a look at this. Now, 
right? When we start talking about things uh, perhaps getting a little bit ugly again, of course, uh, people look for that safety flight, which potentially might be gold. It has sat up in a nice high tight bull flag after this beautiful move higher here. The bottom of that being about that 1650 zone, that breakout, really that 1780 zone. However, a move back up over 1740 would put 1780 back on uh, on. On the target for the uh, the bulls here, and again, we back this out and we look at it on a monthly basis. It's been a very, very strong move uh, from that saucer breakout. That 1780 zone is really, really, really important. So we'll continue to keep our eyes, but just like um, a lot of things we've looked at so far, really not a whole lot of movement here over the last month. In fact, if we look at the 14th of um, April here, that price on gold was, you know, in that big candle of, uh, you know, right at this zone, 1720s, 1730s. Um, so, you know, no appreciation essentially in a month. So we're looking for that next move. The other thing I wanted to check in with today is oil. Now, oil has had an incredible uh, move off of the bottom. I mean, it's up almost 300% or so off the bottom. But well, that sounds insane to say, the fact is, is oil got down to $6.50 a barrel. So getting back up to 26, yes, on a percentage gain, it's huge. But at the same point in time, we're still trading at $26 in oil for barrel, which all the companies are unprofitable at. There's still a huge issue here in this oil space. And the major resistance zone is really from that 27 to 30. You can see from that original gap down day, that's the bottom of the zone bounced back up. And then once it fell underneath of there, it failed every single time it's come up and tested it. And that's been four or five times. So you got to get back up over 30, and then you really need to get up over 36 to try to close that gap of 41 and a half um, for us to really have any hope inside the energy space. Because again, this is, there's no companies that are making money at $26 a barrel oil, and this is a major problem. So, uh, you know, so running into this resistance zone, if we start to turn back down here, like we've seen some of the other indexes do, that could be a, a really bad sign. So we're going to continue to pay very close attention to that. Now, what I want to take a look at here from uh, sentiment side of things is I would like us to take a look first and foremost at our put to call ratio and the option speculation index. We have never been this high while the S&P is traded underneath of its 50 week moving average. Right. So typically uh, when you get uh, um, speculation that's this high and the indexes are, are pointed higher, the moving averages are pointed higher, it's not necessarily bad. It, you know, you can continue to, to, to push higher when you have an extremely high speculative ratio. While the technicals in terms of the uh, the overall market itself are pretty weak, that typically doesn't lead to, to great gains. Um, and so that is certainly a concern. The other thing that's a real concern here is how quickly it made this move in terms of change of sentiment. And so when we look at this data, if it takes 30 days to cycle, or more than 30 days to cycle from uh, the different put to call ratios here, you know, we'll look out a couple of weeks, you know, we're positive about 60% of the time. A month, we're positive about 60% of the time. We go out three months, 60% of the time. You know, a year later, we're positive about 87% of the time. However, that's not what's happened here. We did that cycle in less than 30 days. And when we do that in less than 30 days, when you go back and look historically at the numbers, they're not nearly as attractive for the bulls. In fact, they're really bad in the beginning here, right? We look one week out, only positive a quarter of the time, two weeks, 30% of the time, three months, only 43% of the time. That is giving credence in favor to the bulls here. I'm sorry, to the bears here. Um, and even when we go out a year, yep, we're positive 71% of the time. So you know, over the next couple of months, this has not been a good sign historically. However, still long term, it does have a bias here to the upside. Now, the next thing that I want to jump in and take a look at here is the top weighting of companies. Now, this is uh, something you may have seen floating around here. If we take a look at the top five companies in terms of uh, the index weighted performance, this, by the way, this data set is actually goes back to April 30th. So it's, it's a little bit outdated, but basically the top five companies are up for the year while the remaining 495 companies are down for the year. And when we look at the weighting of it, these top five companies actually make up almost 25% of the S and P's gains. So that we actually have a very interesting looking data set for when the S&P 500 rallies off of a 52-week low with the top five stocks making up only 20% of the total points, look at where the numbers are. A week later, 
we're positive 70% of the time, two weeks, 100% of the time, three months, 80% of the time, six months, 100%, one year, 100%. Basically, if everything is rallying together, it's a lot better than if just five stocks are subsequently making up the lion's share of the gains. When we take a look at this data set with the top five stocks making up more than 20% of the total points, these are some of the ugliest numbers from a historical standpoint that I've seen because all of them have happened in the midst of bear markets. They were all bear market rallies. One week later, we're only positive 30% of the time. Two months later, 14% of the time. Three months later, the market with this analysis on it has never been positive between 1990 and 2000. And obviously 20 is a question mark in terms of where we are in three months. But Six months later, only positive 14% of the time. A year later, only positive a third of the time with the average risk of 27% to the downside. That's one of the ugliest data sets that we've ever taken a look at. And it stands to make sense, right? Breadth is really, really important. If only a couple of companies are making up the majority of the gains, that means underneath the surface, the majority of stocks are participating. And you do not have a strong bull market with a fraction of stocks participating. When we look at the transports, when we look at the banking index, when we look at the energy sector, right? We have lots of issues underneath the surface. Just because the top five biggest companies in the world have seen money flock to them and have performed well here over the last month does not mean the overall market is out of the woods yet. So when we take a look back at what's going on here, guys, the most important thing to pay attention to is these major resistance zones, right? The bulls have to get us back above them, or we definitely stand to have the potential for that move lower. I have a feeling here over the next few weeks, we're going to be continuing to look at potentially those downside support levels to see where the market might make its next bounce. Um, so again, we need to watch that 2800 level on the S&P 500 and move back under that. It really does, you know, once again, for the first time here in a while, give the, uh, the bears some credence to push this lower. So I hope you guys stay safe. Have yourselves a fantastic week. As always, take care. And if you guys want to get a hold of me, you can reach me at mtedeski at perspectiveofplaying.com or you can pick up the phone and give me a call at 814 580 9881. Be more than happy to talk anything market related with you guys. Um, so, once again, pick up the phone, shoot me an email. Love to talk to you guys. See you all next week. Take care.